Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Hannah and I'm a homeschooling mom of three little girls who are nine, eight, and five, and I'm also a fully qualified naturopath living and working in New Zealand. Today I have got a homeschool book haul for you guys, what I have been buying lately for our homeschool. So if you're interested to see what I've been buying lately, little homeschool book haul, stay tuned. Deep in the shadow. Okay, so. I'm gonna try to get into it. I'm gonna try not to be too long-winded because um, I can do that when I'm talking about books very easily. But I did want to explain a little bit before I get started, actually, that, because I need to justify myself, right? Like, a, you, as a homeschool mom, you can't just be out here buying books and like having big old book hauls, you know, mid-year. Um, also for us, down here in New Zealand, of course, our seasons are opposite to you guys in the northern hemisphere so we're already so because our seasons are opposite um we start school in january and so we're already well over halfway through our school year at the moment so when i say like mid-year um homeschool book haul that's that's the reason why because we are mid-year over mid-year now so down here in the Southern Hemisphere, we're currently in winter time and like we're almost at the end of it, only a couple weeks left until spring. And I can't wait. I just feel like it's been like a slog. It's like slow and boring and it's just, it's been really hard. And the girls, all the girls and myself have been feeling it lately. All of my like close friends and even my husband recently has been, you know, complaining like, man, I just, I have no motivation, I don't feel like doing anything, I'm super tired, and it's almost like this like collective, like winter fatigue that's like, I don't know, like a gray cloud looming over everything, and I don't know, it's weird, it's a weird thing. <laughs> the reason that this is my justification for buying books mid-year is because the girls and I have been really bored in our homeschool. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. We have now put aside our Gather Around Chemistry, which was our science unit for this term. We've completely put it aside, as well as our Story of the World, Volume 2, actually. It's been completely put on the back burner for the time being, so that those encompass our group subjects for the most part. And so, um, yeah, we've currently, we're just doing, like, the bare basics of homeschooling and just trying to get back out into nature. I feel like... That's something that I've just, I haven't been prioritizing enough throughout the winter, especially, you know, when it's like super cold and yucky outside. Um, yeah. So anyways, this is all related to my book haul. <laughs> somehow, somehow it is, I'm sure. Um, no, but in actual fact, like I just, personally, I wanted some new stuff in our homeschool, you know, that like mid-year you need a pick-me-up type of thing, you want something new and fresh and exciting, because all of that, um, you know, back to school excitement is like well and truly gone, um, and yeah, it's just like a hard slog at the moment, um, but anyways, this is a book haul to make myself and our homeschool feel better throughout the rest of this winter and moving into spring, I wanted a few new pieces to put on our bookshelf, um, as also some of these are gifts. So that's another justification I have for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. All of that being said, you guys, let me just get straight into it. This is my book haul and what I have been buying recently for our homeschool. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I have in my little box here, this is a New Zealand based obviously um nature activity book and i thought this was super duper cute i was like i was just saying before i feel like i really haven't prioritized being out in nature enough with the kids lately and like every time we do go out into nature you know through the forest or at the beach or something like that we're constantly like this is so nice we should do this more often we should come back again next week and bring a picnic and all oh, like, it's so much fun when we are actually out in nature, but for some reason, it's just a hard... It's, it's like, difficult to get out and just do it. But anyways, I thought that having something like this would make it a little bit more intentional for us to actually get out in nature. We'll be able to use some of the activities in here, um, you know, to just make our time in nature more intentional and to kind of go out with a mission of, you know, finding particular birds or... Um, 
with a particular artwork in mind that we're wanted that we want to do with the nature pieces we find and stuff like that. So obviously, um, this anything in here, if I want to um, let my girls write in it, I'll need to photocopy everything because I do have three kids. But um, yeah, I just thought this was neat. Okay. Okay, the next thing I have here, I've got a couple of random pieces. This one I got secondhand. Um, this is Jessica Townsend's Nevermore, the Trials of Morgan Crow. I have heard really good things about this book. I've got um, personal friends in our homeschooling group who have recommended it. Um, apparently it's sort of like Harry Potter vibes, so I'm interested to um, read this and see how we feel about it. We're not the biggest Harry Potter fans, so it's going to be interesting. I will pre-read all of these books before I either give them to my kids or before I read them aloud. That's a lesson I've learned recently. I'm forever going to like at least skim read all of the books I bring into my home. So um, yeah, we'll see how I feel about this one. I may have to gift it on if um, if it's not to my liking. Okay, the next random piece I've got here is The Dangerous Business of Being Tilbury Muffet. This looks really, really neat. I really like the um, storyline on the back. It says, a mysterious illness is making people bake ancient cakes, speak dead languages, and then fall asleep. When, Til when Trill, Trillbly? Muffet's mother catches the strange sickness, Trillbly must find her only surviving relative, a 300-year-old aunt who lives in a secret antique shop on the edge of time. Sounds like a crazy adventure. This sounds really interesting. I'm, I'm keen to read it and see how I feel about it. Okay, these next two books here I bought specifically for um, a book club. So recently I started up a book club with our homeschooling group, um, you know, just a few of us mamas um, who are going to get together once a month and go through the book that we've read for that month. So a couple of these books that I bought are specific for that book club. So. The first one I've got here is The Secret Seven, and this isn't actually written by Enid Blyton. It is a the um, a Pamela Bochart um, uh, edition. I got this out from the library um, to pre-read, see if it would be a good fit for our, our book club with the homeschool group. Um, and I was looking for something a little bit, um, not spooky, but like Halloween-ish because I had already picked all of our other books pretty much um, up until the end of the year and the only one I hadn't picked was a book for the month of October. Um, and I'm very mindful that the vast majority of families in our homeschooling group do not celebrate Halloween. It's just not a thing here in New Zealand. Um, yeah, you'll find that trick-or-treating is very hard going here. There's like one neighborhood um, in Christchurch, which isn't even the city we live in. Um, there's like one really wealthy neighborhood where a lot of Americans live. Um, and so we just drive there for trick or treating if, if we happen to be in Christchurch, um, you know, around Halloween. Um, yeah, it's just not, it's not a holiday here. Like you, yeah, it's people do not celebrate Halloween and trick or treating is like people get offended by trick-or-treating, let me put it that way. So that being said, I didn't want to have like a Halloween book. I didn't want a Halloween specific anything for our homeschooling group because I was being very mindful of that. Um, so I chose this Enid Blyton um, book, The Secret Seven, and this is Mystery of the Theater Ghost. I thought this was really fitting because, you know, it's, it's like a mystery and there's like a, you know, a theater ghost going on and it's fun and it's exciting and it's like an adventurous type of book, but it also has, you know, those Halloween-y vibes that I wanted, but this is not a Halloween book at all. It doesn't mention Halloween. There is no talk of it whatsoever, so I chose it for those reasons. And I also thought that it would be fun, you know, as like a mystery for our book club kids. So that is a book club pick that I bought. The next book I've got here is also a book club pick. This book, oh my goodness, it's called Amorangi and Millie's Trip Through Time. It's written by Lauren Keenan. She is a Kiwi author and this book is very much based in New Zealand, which is just perfect for us and um, super, super relevant. I fell in love with this book. I read the whole thing in the space of like four hours. 
and I just, I loved it. Um, so basically it's about a brother and sister. Their mom disappears um, into an ancient Rimu tree, um, and they figure out that she's actually gone traveling through time, and so they then jump into the tree, and they start traveling through time as well in order to try and find their mother. And it is so neat because every time they travel back in time, they meet one of their ancestors. So they start off by, I think they they first of all meet their mother when, when she's a little girl, and then they meet their grandmother when she's a little girl, and it just keeps going. And they meet all of these ancestors right up to like pre-colonization. Um, so the two characters, Amorangi and Millie, are Maori, which is of course the indigenous people of New Zealand. Um, and so it was it was just beautiful like how this book was written and how they traveled and met their ancestors you know way back to pre-colonization was just oh, it was on it was super super heartwarming and i loved this book and um it also incorporates a lot of new zealand history which is just perfect for us so yeah i would definitely recommend this book if you are maybe doing a unit on new zealand or you're you know maybe learning a little bit about about oceania or something like that because this does have a lot of new zealand history throughout it and a lot of important topics are discussed um throughout the book as well in a very very child-friendly appropriate way so oh, this out of all the books i got in this haul this is probably the, my favorite one i can't wait to read this again for our book club we'll be reading this in november i can't wait so yeah okay the next thing i've got in my box here i better go a little bit faster because um i'm taking my time here and i've got quite a lot of books to get through this is, of course, classic The Chronicles of Narnia series by C.S. Lewis. Um, I'm telling myself and my husband that this was for <laughs> our book club, um, purely because I did choose The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe for our book club for the month of December. However, when I saw that the whole set was available, I just grabbed the whole set. Um, it wasn't the cheapest thing in the world, I'm going to be honest, but... You know, I've got it now. Uh, so this is The Magician's Nephew, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, The Horse and His Boy, Prince Caspian, The Voyage of the Dawn Trader, The Silver Chair, and The Last Battle. Um, my girls have never, we've never read these before. I read through The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe myself, again, in the space of like a few hours, um, when I was choosing it. Well, when I was looking at it um, as an option for our book club, I read through it and I really enjoyed it. And so, yes. Went with that for the month of December. I chose that for our book club read for December because there are also families in our group who don't celebrate Christmas. And so, again, I was very mindful of that fact. Um, and also, I didn't want, like, a... I probably wouldn't have chosen, like, a Christmas book anyway, mainly because most Christmas novels that I've seen are all based in wintertime and of course for us because our seasons are opposite to you guys in the north it is summertime during Christmas here so I didn't want a book that was like all winter themed and you know penguins and polar bears and I didn't want that anyway and so I felt like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was like a really healthy medium <laughs> um because it's summertime when the kids are in England, and then when they get to Narnia, it's snowing. But then, of course, as the snow melts, all of a sudden it's summer again. So, I don't know. I felt like it was really cool, um, you know, tying the whole season thing in. I don't know. Also, of course, there's that tiny scene in the book where Santa Claus, or Father Christmas, I can't remember what they call him in the book, but he actually does show up and give the kids a gift. But I really like how it was, you know, it's very... It's not like the whole theme of the book or anything. So yeah, hopefully hopefully that's all right for everyone in our book club. We'll see. Okay, next up. Also on the Christmas topic here, I bought these two books. This is The Christmas Carols. I've got the first book and the second book, which just came out recently. Um, I heard a lot of great reviews about these books, and I really, really wanted to read them, but our local library did not have them. And then I saw them available on this website when I was buying books, and I thought, oh yeah, I'll throw them in. So I did. Um, this one, The Christmas Carols, A Fantastically Festive Family, that is the first book. And then the second one, this is The Christmas Competition. Um, I, again, read a lot of awesome reviews about this. Um, 
I haven't read them yet, so I can't tell you about them. But apparently, uh, the main character here is a homeschooled girl. Her name is Holly, um, and she's homeschooled, which I thought was neat. Um, and then, for some reason, she ends up having to go to public school. And um, I guess the book kind of takes you through her process of, you know, being a little bit scared to show who she is. But then in the end, she overcomes that and is like, this is me. I love Christmas. My family loves Christmas and, you know, she sort of overcomes it and doesn't really care what all the kids in her new school think. So, yeah, I mean, and that's just what I've heard. I, again, I haven't read it, so don't take my word for it. And this one, I actually have no idea what happens. So, um, it's going to be a surprise when I read it. <laughs> um, but yes, these are just two book picks um, for our Christmas read-aloud time come December. Okay, you guys, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, the next thing I've got in this book... Um, oh, get them all out. I have got the Pages and Co. book series. Oh, I'm so excited about it, and I'm lowering my volume a little bit because this is actually going to be a birthday gift for my oldest daughter. We recently got the first book out from the library, and she devoured it. She read it all within like two days, and was like, "Oh my gosh." this is amazing. Do they have a second one? So we got out the next book from the library as well. But unfortunately, um, I think the library had the first three. They had the first three, but they didn't have the others. Um, so there's two more after that. And then there's a brand new one being released in a couple of weeks at the beginning of September. Um, and so oh, she, she hasn't read these ones yet. And she also obviously hasn't read the new one that is about to be released so she's going to be super excited about this um she turns 10 in october so this is going to be one of her gifts so i've got pages and co tilly and the book wanderers the pages and co tilly and the lost fairy tales tilly and the map of stories The Book Smugglers, The Treehouse Library, and then I believe the sixth book in the series is called The Last Book Wanderer, um, and I have pre-ordered that and it will be arriving as soon as it is released. Oh, I'm, she's going to be so excited about these, you guys. I love gifting books to people, especially my children. It's so much fun. <laughs> I don't know if they have as much fun with it as I do, but um, yeah, I think she's gonna be pretty stoked when she sees these in her birthday stuff. Okay, last thing I got in my box here before I move on to the other stuff that's sitting here that I also bought. Okay, this is a Christmas gift. Um, I know I got a little bit overexcited. Um, I like to start buying stuff pretty early. Um, the important thing is to write it all down so you know what you've bought so that you don't double buy or buy way too much because you don't know what you have. <laughs> um, but this is going to be a Christmas gift for our middle daughter um, and that is the Magic Treehouse set. This is books 1 through 28. Um, I have mentioned a little bit on here that we have a couple of random Magic Treehouse books that I got secondhand from around the place, but I've only got like two or three, and um, my eight-year-old recently has gotten really into the Magic Treehouses, and even our local library doesn't have very many, so I thought it was high time to buy our own set, and I think she is going to be so excited about this when Christmas rolls around. Sorry, my ring light is just like totally reflecting on the plastic. <sighs> but yes, she is going to be so excited about that. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Next up, I have a couple more book series here that I bought recently. Um, where should I start? Where do we start? Okay, let's go with this one. I got this one recently. Um, this was brand new. I think I paid 40 New Zealand dollars for it, roughly. Um, and this was from the warehouse, if anyone in New Zealand is wondering. And this is Timeless Children's Classics. Inside, we've got Black Beauty, The Wind in the Willows, Treasure Island, The Secret Garden, and Alice, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. 
I've never read any of these books to the girls before so I'm very excited. I've already got planned to read The Secret Garden as well as The Wind in the Willows to the girls come springtime which is not far away now. I'm so excited about that. So yeah that was another random buy but we were in the store. I don't know what it, we were even doing in there and I saw this and I was like oh that's me for sure. Next up I I survived the I survived series I recently bought this secondhand from um, like a Facebook marketplace type of situation um, I can't remember how much I paid for it. it again it was I don't know it was secondhand so um, but I got this book set for my nine-year-old she read a couple of them from the library and was pretty interested in them they're just super quick reads they're not very big and um, I really liked how it gives you that like first person perspective of these events in time. So I, yeah, I don't know you guys, she hasn't, in fact these have been on the shelf for probably like two weeks now and she hasn't read them. <laughs> I don't know. It, it is what it is. Um, but I will most likely be assigning her um, a couple of these as we go through the rest of the year also you know into next year um, if anyone's wondering which books are in here there's the destruction of Pompeii the sinking of the Titanic Hurricane Katrina shark attacks of 1916 the Japanese tsunami the attacks of September 11th the bombing of Pearl Harbor the Battle of Gettysburg the San Francisco earthquake and the Nazi invasion so yes that is the I survived series from Scholastic I was super excited about these and she was at the time too but um yeah now she's not mm. and last but not least this massive stack of books here obviously second hand this is the harry potter collection from start to finish oh my gosh it's hefty it's a hefty one um yeah i i went ahead and got the whole harry potter series we're not the biggest Harry Potter fans here. I, I enjoyed it when I was a kid, but I've never actually read the books myself. Um, but I was looking at potentially the first book for our book club, which I didn't end up choosing. But um, I, I don't know, you guys. I saw a lady selling these on Facebook, and I was like, yeah, I'll take those. It was like 50 New Zealand dollars, which is really, really reasonable. Um considering you know this is all of the books and you can still buy these books brand new in bookstores for like 20 30 dollars a book so I'm pretty happy with this they're all in really great condition we'll see how we go with reading these I don't have any uh, intentional plans of reading them just yet um, of course some of the darker books as well I don't really plan to read aloud um, however I do want to see how we go with reading this first book and if the girl if my girls enjoy it then I may add it to our book club selection for next year so I don't know we'll see we'll see anyways this is the whole set I'm sure you already know um but fun fact in case you didn't know um Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone it's called here not the Sorcerer's Stone um I remember being like super beguiled would be the word when we first moved out of the United States and I was like do they mean Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? Because they that says philosophers, and that's incorrect. But no, um, J.K. Rowling is actually <laughs> from the UK. And um, yeah, it's Philosopher's Stone, you guys. I don't know why it's Sorcerer's Stone in the United States, but yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. Okay, next one, Chamber of Secrets. Oops, someone's screaming. Prisoner of Azkaban. These are in such great condition. Like, they're... They're perfect. They're perfect. Really stoked. Okay, Goblet of Fire. This biggest book here. The Order of the Phoenix. Half-Blood Prince. And last but not least, Deathly Hollows. Like, like beautiful, beautiful condition. Oh, like, how nice. What a beautiful. Just stunning. Love, 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 love. Okay, that is pretty much it for our book haul um, thus far. However, I do have one more thing to show you guys, which I have added to our homeschool as of late. Um, someone is still screaming. Okay, 
The last thing here that is not technically a book, um, but it is something that I have added to our homeschool recently, and that is the new unit from Gather Brown Homeschool, and that is Life Skills. You guys, this just came out last week. Oh, well, the week before, if I'm posting this, when I think I'm going to post this. Um, and I immediately bought it, printed it out, laminated the guy, bound the guy, and yeah. I have no idea when we are going to implement this unit in our homeschool, but I just could not get it, you guys. I don't know. I don't know what the whole thing is. Uh, but Life Skills was a unit that when they first announced their year four collection, I was like, oh yeah, Life Skills 100% out of all the units that they had um, announced they were going to be releasing this year. Life Skills was definitely the one that I had my eye on. So um, I knew I knew I wanted it as soon as it came out. Um, so anyway, here I've got the teacher's guide. I, I got the family bundle as well, in case anyone's wondering. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it was worth it or not, but that's what I did. So pre-reader and then I actually just printed out two early readers from my older daughters. As I said, I don't even know when we're going to be doing this unit, um, but I'm most certainly going to be holding on to it until we do do it. Potentially, maybe next term, I don't know. I'm kind of all over the place at the moment, you guys, to be honest with you. I'm just, I'm just trying to get through the rest of this winter without going crazy, without losing my mind, to be honest. That is all I have to show you today. That is my mid-year homeschool book haul. I hope you have found something useful for you and your homeschool, something interesting. If you guys have any questions about anything, I'm more than happy to answer. Just leave anything down in the comments and I will definitely try to answer those questions as soon as I can. And I also just quickly wanted to mention that because I've had a couple of questions, people asking if I have an Instagram account um, and how to get a hold of me via Instagram. And the answer is yes, I do have an Instagram account. Um, so I will link it down below. However, I am like super bad. I am so inactive on it, you guys. I'm so inactive. There's like no photos on my Instagram page. Um, and yeah, although I feel like if I mention it now here in a video, then you guys actually know about it. You can come follow me over there and that will give me a bit more motivation to actually post over there because at the moment, I don't know, I think I have like 10 followers. <laughs> so no one's gonna see anything that I post anyways, but maybe if I mention it here, then you guys know about it and you can actually go and follow and I will definitely, like the more followers I get over there, the more I will post and share our daily stuff because um, there's a lot like there's a lot more I would like to share with you guys on the daily so yes if you are interested please go to the Instagram <laughs> link down below and follow and I will definitely um, do my best to post over there regularly um, which I'm not even gonna say more regularly because I don't think I've ever posted a story over there yet Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye! Deep in the shadows, I know.